Is there a requirement to show the vehicle's logbook to an officer requesting to look at it? Yes, there is an absolute requirement for that. Before putting tire chains on the tire of your vehicle, you should check to be sure that The tire chains have no broken hooks, cross links, bent, or broken side chains. If you think a tire has blown, what should you do to stop your vehicle? Hold the steering wheel firmly and don't apply the brakes until the vehicle has slowed down. What is black ice? A thin layer of ice clear enough that you can see the road beneath it, making the road appear wet. As soon as you see your trailer getting off the proper backing path, you should Turn the top of the steering wheel in the direction of the drift. What should you do if your vehicle starts to hydroplane? Release the accelerator and push in the clutch. To keep your vehicle from rolling back, when you start up, you should partly engage the clutch before you take your right foot off of the brake. Why do you know, pardon me, Why should you know what traffic is doing on all sides? You need to know you will have the room to change lanes or to stop. What's controlled braking? Controlled braking is applying the brakes as hard as you can without locking the wheels. Whenever you're about to pass a vehicle, a pedestrian, or a cyclist, you should assume that they haven't seen you. Convex mirrors show a wider area than flat mirrors, but they also make everything seem farther away than it really is. What are three factors of total stopping distance with hydraulic brakes? Perception, reaction, and braking distance. When backing a trailer, you can make corrections to reposition your vehicle by using pull ups. Empty buses don't require more stopping distance than loaded buses because 
They usually have as much braking power when empty as when loaded. Where do you place the three reflector triangles on a two lane road? At 10 feet and 100 feet of the rear and 100 feet from the front of the vehicle. When should you use your high beam headlights? Whenever you can, providing the law allows it. In holding the steering wheel, what's the proper way to place your hands? Firmly, with your hands on opposite sides of the wheel. If you have to set out reflective warning triangles by the highway, you should hold them between yourself and oncoming traffic. What are some things to do when you are backing your vehicle? Look at your path, back slowly, back straight back. What are some defects to look for in the suspension system? Spring hangers that are cracked or broken. When should you downshift for a curve? You should downshift before entering the curve. Besides looking for vehicles coming into your lane, what else does looking for traffic mean? It means watching for the brake lights of slowing vehicles ahead of you. What's the purpose of cargo blocking and bracing? to keep cargo from sliding, falling, and getting out of balance. When you need to slow down, you may want to warn drivers behind you by lightly tapping on the brake pedal to flash the brake lights. When backing a trailer, you should turn the steering wheel opposite the direction you want to go. What's a major cause of most serious skids? Driving too fast for road conditions. Where should you aim when fighting a fire with a fire extinguisher? Aim at the base of the fire. When checking tires, what are some problems you should look for? Bad wear, cuts or other damage, tread separation, cracked valve stems. How do you know you have the engine speed and road speed to shift gears? You will know by listening to the sound the engine makes.
When using a helper to back a vehicle, your helper should agree with you on the hand signal for stop and the helper should stand where you can see him at all times. Wheels or rims that have been repaired by welding are unsafe. What are some items to check, especially before driving in winter weather? Check the coolant, antifreeze level, and the windshield washer antifreeze level. Besides watching traffic behind, what else should you use your rear view mirrors to watch out for? Watch out for possible tire fires. With respect to braking, what's advisable when pulling off the road? Try to avoid using your brakes until your speed has dropped to about 20 miles per hour. When driving, do you always want to be staring off into the distance ahead? No, you should sh be shifting. When driving, do you always want to be staring off into the direction? Oh, my God. When driving, do you always want to be staring off into the distance ahead? No, you should be shifting your attention back and forth, near and far. At night, where should you look to avoid the glare of traffic? Eh. We're gonna make more errors now. We're gonna wait a second. At night, where should you look to avoid the glare of headlights from oncoming traffic? Look at the right side of the road and watch the sidelines. Why can't you assume your vehicle will clear the heights posted at overpasses? Because some roads can cause your vehicle to tilt. How long does it take to stop a heavy vehicle going 55 miles per hour on a dry level road? about the length of a football field or about six seconds. You want to turn right and you must swing wide, so you should turn wide as you complete the turn.
some newer vehicles have progressive shifting. What does that mean? The RPMs at which you shift become higher as you move up in the gears. Some newer vehicles have progressive shifting. What does that mean? The RPMs at which you shift become higher as you move up in the gears. What could rust around the wheel nuts mean? The wheel nuts could be loose. What's a problem with mirrors? There are blind spots your mirrors can't show you. What's the minimum amount of tread depth your tires should have? Four thirty seconds of an inch on the front wheels and two thirty seconds of an inch on all other wheels. A pre trip inspection should be performed before each trip. When driving downhill, in a vehicle equipped with an automatic transmission, you should select a low range for greater engine braking. What are some things to do if you're being tailgated? Avoid quick changes of speed or direction. To be sure you know what's happening on the highway in front of you, don't focus too long on the mirrors. Exhaust system parts shouldn't touch or rub against fuel system parts, tires, or other moving parts of the vehicle. How do you test hydraulic brakes for their stopping action? Go about five miles per hour and then push the brake pedal firmly. When using your turn signals, what's a good practice to follow? If you don't have self-canceling turn signals, don't forget to turn them off after using them. When traction is poor because of rain or snow, how would you increase your vehicle's speed? very gradually. Where do you place the three reflector triangles on a divided highway? Place them all to the rear at 10 feet, 100 feet, and at 200 feet. How often should you inspect your cargo? After every break during the trip. When driving over 40 miles per hour, 
How much space should you keep in front of you? At least one second for 10 feet of your vehicle length plus one second. What is a vehicle condition report? A list of problems which you have found with the vehicle. What should you do if your vehicle starts to hydroplane? Release the accelerator and push in the clutch. What can happen if you don't have enough weight on the steering axle? Underloaded front axles caused by shifting weight too far to the rear can make the steering axle weight too light to steer safely. Before starting down a hill, to be sure you are in the proper gear, you should downshift before starting down the hill. How does tire pressure affect hydroplaning? Hydroplaning is more likely to occur when the tire pressure is low. When should you help out other drivers by signaling that it's safe to pass? Never. That's not your job. Never signal another driver to let him know it's safe to pass. What's probably your best driving speed? Traffic is moving at 35 miles per hour in a 55 mile per hour zone. 35 miles per hour. Turned on brake retarders apply their power when you let up all the way on the accelerator pedal. What's the minimum number of tie downs you should have? You should have at least two tie downs. Should you turn off brake retarders when the road is wet or covered with snow? Yes, brake retarders could cause a skid. Slight melting will make ice wet. What is more slippery? Wet ice. At dawn or dusk, or in rain or snow, when it's difficult for other drivers to see you, you should consider turning on your low beam headlights. Since air pressure increases with temperature increases, you should leave the tires alone since the air pressure will decrease when the tires cool off. Speed limits posted at freeway off-ramps may not be 
save speeds for larger vehicles or heavily loaded vehicles. With your vehicle stopped, how do you test hydraulic brakes for a leak? Pump the brake pedal three times, then apply firm pressure, and then hold for five seconds. When merging with traffic, you should look in your mirrors to make sure the gap in the traffic is large enough for your vehicle to enter traffic. What are some steering system defects to look for? Missing nuts, bolts, cotter keys, or other parts. The amount of space needed to cross or enter traffic is affected by the weight of the load. Antifreeze is effective for hot conditions as well as cold. How many times more distance does it take to stop a vehicle when the speed is doubled? Four times as much. It takes four times more distance to stop the vehicle when the speed is doubled. What are two factors for knowing when to shift? Using the engine speed and road speed. If you have to stop your vehicle in the road to load cargo or passengers, you should flash your brake lights to warn drivers behind you. Why do empty trucks usually require greater stopping distances? Empty trucks can bounce and lock their wheels. What's the only way to stop a front wheel skid? Let the vehicle slow down, stop turning, and stop braking so hard. What's important about the center of gravity for a load? A high center of gravity means your vehicle is more likely to tip over. Hi. 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 Hello there. How are you? This is Barry Branton and I have essentially what you can see here is figure 1.2 uh, and that can be found in section 1 and in introduction. Now this chart that, um, that I'm looking at um, and get the mouse okay so I'm going to show you how uh, to use this this chart in figure 1.2 that's a little more ex extensive if you go to section 1 and look at figure 1.2 uh, they won't have the the uh, section title next to the section number so you really don't know what you're you're looking at you just know the number so then you have to go back and refer to the number so i i basically uh refined this uh 
chart to make it a little more easier. Now I'm going to be going over um, what do you need to study for your uh, for your class A for general knowledge. Okay, so um, the way this chart works, uh, and I will go ahead and I guess use uh, let's say green. Um, we're going to um, look at what we want to study for a class A license. Um, okay, so class A, uh, oh, control Z, well, let's go and get that. Okay. All right, so for your class A, this is what you need to study just for general knowledge. Uh, actually, not for general knowledge, but for... Um, class a license now um uh ultimately uh, for your written part remember that the the exams are uh broken into two different um, types you've got the written exams and you've got the skills exams so right now you're primarily concerned with the written exam so let's um Let's go ahead and look at the uh, what what is needed for the class A written exams um, for general knowledge. Now, uh, I suggest uh, that you study these three here. And additionally, um, uh, I would study uh, the combination vehicles. Because that may be in the general knowledge exam. And since uh, tractor trailers... They all have air brakes. Uh, you might as well study the air brakes too, just so you have some foundational knowledge. Okay. So let me just, so basically what you see in purple, I would suggest studying for the general knowledge exam. Now, could you get away with uh, not studying air brakes? Probably. Could you get away with not studying combination vehicles? Probably. But you're going to have to take... Um, a uh um let's see here well they don't have it as an endorsement so what i would do is i would i would definitely study combination vehicles for class a you want to study um you want you want to study these right here and combination vehicles right here okay and you're going to need air brakes too but you you could probably get away with just doing these four sections here. Section one, introduction. Section two, uh, driving safely. Section three, transporting cargo safely. And section six, um, combination vehicles. The most difficult um, section of all of those um, four is going to be driving safely because it's a very long section uh, 23 subsections okay so that's just for the general knowledge now if you're going to be uh, transporting cargo you're depending on um you've got these endorsements here now if you want to to say uh transport hazardous materials you would need um like gasoline which pays pretty good you would need this let me just um you would need this this one here this um just bear with me a second i'm gonna you would need this uh hazardous material um endorsement now if you're going to be driving and you would also need this tank vehicle endorsement right here uh, maybe i should change that out with a different color so if you're driving, transporting gasoline, you need hazardous materials, you need tank vehicles, and, excuse me. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, all right, so we're back to recording. Um, tank vehicles, uh, if you're hauling gasoline or some flammable material. So you'd need 
hazardous materials, and tank vehicles. And while you're at it, you might as well get your, I'll just do a different color, you might as well get your um, doubles and triples right there. And of course, you're going to need air brakes. Um, if you're driving 18-wheeler, most vehicles have air brakes, so that's section five. So, but just for your general knowledge, for your written exam, class A, what do you need? I would go with these, well, that looks pretty terrible. Let me try that again. These sections here. And I've heard that there are some combination vehicle questions on the class A, so I would study this one here. And as for there being um, general air brake questions on the the um, the general knowledge, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't chance it. I would go ahead and study that. So uh, you're looking at five sections uh, starting off with, um, and that's just for the general knowledge. So there'll be uh, a, a a copy of this chart. In the description of this video that you can download um, now let's let's go ahead and clear these out and start over again we're gonna look at uh, class B which is what I had I drove a school bus so for class B you're going to need just for the study material I'm, I'm not talking about the skills test. Just study your written part. You're going to need this right here. You're going to need to study. Um, you're going to need to study um, um, section one, two, and three right here. And as I said, the most difficult one that you're going to have is going to be uh, the driving safely by far again that is because it's 23 sec subsections now uh, for driving a school bus I had to take the um, you have to take the school bus endorsement and you have to take the passenger endorsement um, and um, required for studying for the passenger endorsement you need to study Make sure that you have studied um, driving safely. Now, irregardless um, uh, for your passenger um, endorsement and your school bus endorsement, and also for your um, general knowledge skills test, we're talking skills test, you're going to need, this is after you've passed the written test, you're going to need to study section 11 pre-trip vehicle inspection and section 12 basic vehicle control skills test and section 13 on road skills test you need that for the general knowledge part and you need that for your endorsement okay all right so this would be the school bus uh, if you're going to drive a school bus okay so what do you need you need um class b and some school buses, not all, the majority, I don't believe, are air brakes. Most are hydraulic. But there are the there are uh, school districts that have air brakes. And you're going to need an air brakes endorsement. Or it's basically, you could call it an endorsement. You need to take the air brakes exam, which I have um, videos that cover air brakes. I have videos that cover school bus uh, endorsement. I have uh, videos that cover the passenger endorsement. I even have videos that cover, uh, cover combination vehicles and doubles and triples. So uh, that's for a school bus. Now let's take a look at um, what you would need for saying a driving a municipal um, city bus. Okay, so again, what you would need is you would need uh, these first three. This is just for the written part. You would need the introduction, driving safely, transporting cargo so um, B and C you need that you're probably going to need air brakes because the I've you're going to need air brakes 
municipal city buses are air brakes okay you're going to need your passenger so here's what you need to study for your passenger uh, endorsement um, and you're gonna need to be able to for all of those well I would say not class a you, know, you could have one um, but you're gonna need to study pre-trip vehicle inspection basic vehicle control skills test and on-road driving now this is for um, after you've done take taken the exam the written exam uh, general knowledge passenger and air brakes so um, generally when you go to take your exam you should know what type of vehicle you're going to be driving in fact what I recommend is um, let's say you don't have a CDL you know, you've and you never driven before the easiest way I believe to get trained if you are in a school district that has a shortage of school bus drivers now that's how I got in and it didn't really cost me anything um, what did I have to pay out of pocket to drive a school bus which allowed me to get my CDL um, I had to pay for the license which was about fifty dollars and um, I had to pay for the mech the medical exam examining a medical exam certificate uh, or a medical examiner certificate that's what you need um, they they check you to make sure that you're okay that you are able to operate a vehicle you, you have to get a physical exam by a qualified person uh, so that was um, that was pretty expensive that cost now I I went to a specialist a chiropractor who was uh, qualified and doing that normally you can get a, a low ball um, done by a, 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 like an I think they're called Arvins or uh, advanced uh, nurse practitioner uh, I think my company had a special deal where you could get it for say under 40 um, but I wanted to go where I had a little more um, you know I, I knew the chiropractor so uh, of course I paid 80 but it was worth it um, more customized more personalized um, um, you they're not in a rush so um, I would recommend going to your um, to uh, unless you can't afford it you know but um, you get your mech uh, so I recommend getting your job first um, as a, in the school bus route go get the job even if you don't have the CDL then they will uh, they'll ask you to study these sections here and they may actually have um, they may actually have um, they may actually have I don't know what I'm going to say basically uh, they may have a study program there or, or a training program for the written part now what when I went to study at my the school bus company that I got a job I worked there for three years um, basically they gave me a manual they said go get your Mac um, and um, study they gave me a manual and they said study these three sections they highlighted section one two and three they highlighted the school bus endorsement and they highlighted um, the passenger endorsement um, which is uh, this one here so what did I have to study I had to study sections um, one through four and section ten now when I passed the written exam um, then they said well they told me after you've passed your written exams uh, your general knowledge your um, your passenger and your school bus then come back to us and uh, we'll start training you on the skills um, test which uh, I basically went out with a company trainer and we the person showed me how to do a uh, a basic um, pre-trip vehicle inspection externally and internally you've got to do them both and also um, once I was able one you, you kind of do all three at the same time um, so it's just memorization we would also do uh, backing up um, 
tests and parking tests and that sort of thing as you actually show you demonstrate it and then um, on-road driving I was actually driving my old my route which I didn't know it at the time but that was I was practicing on and of course I had to study um, sections 11 12 and 13 so that's my uh, my recommendation now once you once you acquire your class uh, B CDL what I recommend is go get a job I don't say you've been there say three or four or five years inquire about becoming a municipal city bus driver you can do it that because you've already got basically the all the endorsements the only endorsement you need is the air brakes endorsement and that's um, I've got videos for that so uh, there you have it now this video has been going on for about uh, 17 minutes um, I hope this uh, this was able to help you if you like this content please give me a thumbs up and um, leave a comment also please consider subscribing to my channel um, and you know um, I suggest it for anyone who uh, wants to um, you're, maybe you're in a rut you're in a job that you don't really like say you're um, you you have a job where you have to stand on your feet all day long you know working at a McDonald's or I should, probably shouldn't say McDonald's but a, a, bur a burger place okay um, or any type of um, restaurant or, or in the store where you, you're expected to be on your feet uh, eight hours a day you know uh, driving a school bus you're sitting down um, so it's a lot easier you know you, you do have to stand up some um, but for the most part you do your vehicle you you go to your job you your route pretty much stays the, ch the same um, they they do make changes you might have a few extra stops you might lose a few stops or you might have to do a different route but um, it's pretty much the same if you stay with the same route um, you're doing the same path you're driving the same path uh, usually the only thing that changes is the weather and the different students they get on the bus so and it takes maybe two two hours to drive the route and um, if you can do maybe maybe two three hours depending on the size of the route and how far you have to drive so um, I recommend um, to get your CDL without a lot of cost out of your pocket go the school bus route you don't even need your CDL just apply it helps if you had some prior driving experience um, now luckily I was uh, before they had the CDL I had a chauffeur's license I drove a beer truck so I knew how to back up uh, big trucks um, but that's my suggestion um, go with uh, becoming a school bus driver and uh, you know they have a shortage of them so they're looking for good people and uh, as long as your records clean and you're responsible um, and you're in good health I, I, I highly suggest it so um, thanks for watching this video um, we'll try to get some more out later thank you so much bye bye